Okay, so we're doing a little bit of a reboot here in Revit. Um, and just kind of getting things rolling again for RF222. So I just want to cover a little bit of the basics. And then we're going to move to this idea of how do we start a project when sometimes looking at this blank screen with these four boxes and triangles on it right here that represent our elevations can be really intimidating. So bringing in a little bit of data will help us sort of just begin blocking out um, our precedent studies. So first things first, we have our properties panel. Um, if nothing is selected, our properties are going to be the view properties. So that's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at the view properties for our floor plans, right? So specifically, this is floor plan level one. If I select something here, that properties panel is going to change for whatever is selected. That would include if I happen to have some architecture drawn. So just put in a wall here really quick. So again, if nothing is selected, then my properties are for the view. If something is selected, the properties here will populate for whatever item is selected. Cool. So I'm going to do a right lasso, hit delete. Below that is a project browser. For the most part, especially as you're learning Revit, this is primarily where you're going to be navigating your different views, right? So I've got level one, level two, site, reflected ceiling plan views, my elevation views. And if you'll notice, one of the things that is not listed yet is a three-dimensional view. I can bring up a new three-dimensional view simply by clicking on the house right here. And that's going to populate 3D views. Also, there's not a section view yet. Once I actually cut a section, those will start to populate as well. The view that I'm on will be listed as bold, right? So right now I'm in my 3D view, that text is bold. So let's go back to level one. And let's get rid of sort of the intimidation of looking at this blank screen. Oh, one thing before I do that. One of the reasons why I wanted to open up all of these views was to show you that as you start moving through your project, those different views do show up as tabs as well. And those are even tabs that I can break free, I thought, yeah. And so I can even move those to a different screen if you have dual monitors, or I can set them up as views side by side, things like that. Typically, I don't find that particularly productive. Um, I, my preference is to just navigate and have as much real estate on screen as I can moving view to view is quick enough that I usually don't need multiple views open of a single object. Okay, so level one, we were talking about the blank screen, sort of the doom and gloom of looking at nothing on your screen. And so this works with either a hand drawing that you've done, or in this case, a precedent study. And what we wanna do is bring in a background image and scale it so I can start modeling directly on top of it. It's a really, really good starting point as you're getting comfortable with the software. So to do that, I'm inserting something new. So I know I'm going to go to the Insert tab. Bling. I know I'm inserting an image. So I'm going to go to the Image button. And I'm going to select, in this case, I'm going to walk through starting off um, the precedent study model of Thorn Crown. So I'm going to click Open. And I'm going to place that image. First thing to note, North is this direction, right? Super important. In my Revit world, north is up. I don't want to be a slop artist about this, but I'm going to call this for now close enough and leave it exactly as it is. Next, I am going to move. Um, this is a reference image with an elevation, a section, and a plan. I'm most interested in the plan. And I am going to move that close to the origin, that being 0, 0, 0 in the XYZ Cartesian coordinate axis system, which is roughly right in the center of these elevation tags. It's not something that I have to do, but it will make your life easier, especially as we move things from Revit to twin motion. Okay, so with that roughly centered, the next thing that I need to do is I need to scale this. Right now, this is not any specific scale. It looks approximately correct. And a lot of times when you bring something in, it's not even going to be approximately correct. It's going to be maybe this line would be 10 feet or something like that, right? This is a fairly high resolution image that I'm bringing in. 
So it shows up fairly large in the view. It's 81 feet across from edge to edge. Knowing that I've modeled this before and have done a bit of research, I know this dimension is actually closer to 75 feet, if I remember correctly. So what I need to do is scale this image to be closer to that 75 foot mark. To do that, I'm going to create a couple of baselines for me. So that's going to be underneath annotate and detail line. And I'm going to start with a line right along that edge of one side of the wall. Next, I'm going to select that, and that was a left lasso. So a left lasso you're going to see as a series of dots. And essentially anything that crosses that lasso is going to be selected. A right lasso is a solid line, and it is only going to select the things within the lasso, right? So right lasso, it's got to cover everything. Left lasso, it only needs to cross. So let's left lasso, copy, and I'm going to select or left click the base point right here. And I'm going to place my second copy at the end of this wall. Next, I need to do an offset command. So that's underneath modify, offset, and I'm going to offset by an amount of 75 feet. I'm going to hover over the edge of this line. Notice I'm not right on the line, but I'm throwing that line the direction that I want it to go. And it's giving me these set of dashed lines, 75 feet, in the direction. Let's just think of those dashed lines as a preview. If I zoom out a little bit, if I hover to the other side, you'll see it's going to throw that 75 feet in the other direction, right? So that one, that way. So I'm going to left click in the direction that I want that to go. Cool. So I've got my existing dimension right here of 81 feet 5 inches, and I want that dimension to become 75 feet. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my image with a left click, and I'm going to activate the scale tool. Using the scale tool, I'm going to select my base point right here. So that's a left click. And then I'm going to left click the dimension that I have, 81 feet 5, then the dimension that I want, 75 feet. Okay, that is now scaled approximately correct. And I say approximately because this is only a raster image. Okay, if I zoom in on this, all of a sudden that line pretty much disappears. So you're really only getting a level of guidance with this, you're not necessarily getting a level of precision. To further emphasize that point, I go back to annotate and detail line, I'm going to guess that this line isn't even quite square. Yeah, it's, oh gosh, helps if I draw the line correctly. Let's try that one more time. Detail line, base point right there. Let's bring this all the way across. Yeah, you can actually see that image isn't even square on the page that I scanned in. So you're using this not to follow exactly, but you're using it as a guide and you're using that as something to begin sort of helping the intimidation of looking at this big blank screen in Revit. We'll talk a little bit more about adding things on top of this in the next video.